That's right. We're going to be talking about <laughs> X-Men 97 now. We're just going to move on to the main topic. I'm first. eating a fucking cookie in the middle of a goddamn <laughs> broadcast. What the fuck is wrong with me? All right, so we're talking about... <coughs> so X-Men 97, episode three. Yes. Uh, I don't remember the title of this one, but... Um, uh, we're going, we get some interesting introductions, and mm-hmm. it looks like we are headed down the path that we thought, um, at least with Nathan and all that stuff. And this is obviously going to be spoilers, because this you, episode... You uh, actually were the one who um, got it right last week. What? Um, I was thinking that it was maybe the original X-Men, like they just did. And you were the one that said maybe it's. You oh, brought, I said Madeline Pryor. Didn't you I? brought up the Jean Grey. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think I actually said Madeline Pryor, but I was like, I'm pretty sure there's like a clone thing, and I couldn't remember yeah, her we, name. We went we went into it. I talked about it a little bit, but she was in the Inferno Saga. She ended up being the Goblin Queen in. Listen, and that was how they explained Jean Grey not committing a genocide. Cool. With the Phoenix stuff, that because. That was how they brought her back, but they had to also be like, well, she did commit like horrible atrocities, and like, well, that wasn't her; that was the phoenix. So, sure, and that the, so all of this is, you know, from the comics. This whole storyline is from the comics. Um, so, the idea very, of very, very truncated version of Cable's origin, but. Yeah. The elements are all there. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that we went from introducing him to immediately giving him the Technovirus within an episode. I was kind of surprised by that. But Uh, I guess that is in the continuity that he's always had that virus, right? Right, and I can't remember. I don't know if it's Sinister who gives it to him in the comics. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it is, because Sinister is obsessed with... I I thought he got it sometime in the future. Legitimate, like, legit. Sinister's thing is, like, he just... He's obsessed with the Summers family. He's obsessed with Summers' DNA. Right, but no, I... So he's always trying to make... I'm saying that it it may very well have been... It may very... May, may very well have ended up that that's why Cable went to the future, is because yeah. he was infected it, with the tech. Yeah, it's all. But it's, I don't think it was Sinister who did it. I think it was somebody else. Yeah, but that's always. Yeah, that's but always it been matter. his origin was the techno virus thing. Yeah, he had to go to the future to get rescued by Bishop, or he we went with Bishop to hopefully yeah. get cured, which I don't think he ever did, or whatever, or he did, or I don't know. I really hope in the MCU. They take a lot of cues from this and really redeem what Fox did to characters like Bishop. Yeah. Because Bishop could have been so much mm-hmm. more, and he kind of just got relegated to... Uh, not. I mean, like he plays a role in Days of Future Past and stuff, but... like He's not really a speaking role. I really want to see him shine. We and, saw Thunderbird, but not really. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, so this is a trippy episode. So we get the reveal that, um, that this is a clone situation. And then, uh, we find out that the gene that we thought was pregnant and had Nathan is the, she's actually the clone. Yeah. So how does that work? If Gene and Scott are sending him into the future, then are we just, is Madeline just she just kind of moves on at the end of this episode, which kind of sucks because no, that is her she'll baby. Be, she'll be back, but no, yes, it is. But I, I think they they dealt with it in a really a- excellent way at the end, where they were like, "Who's to say, you know, we can both have a fresh start?" Because who's to say where our lives ended and where our our be- where ours began, where yours began, whatever, you know? Because we don't know when. You, we don't know when the clone became me. This is actually kind of um, so they both. Not only they are are they both absolved of genocide because which one of them did it? <laughs> yeah. But also, I think Madeline is okay with being like, "Well, you're his mom because, and I trust you because you're me, and I know you love Scott, and I know." And you know what Scott I mean? didn't fall in love with me. He fell in love with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm somebody else. I'm not you. I was playing you. Um, and it's 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 like um, 
You know, we've talked about, uh, I'm sure we've mentioned multiplicity on this fucking show many times about having, right? Multiple. Uh, but what's the lesson of the movie? The lesson of the movie is is that if you create another you, that's not you anymore. That's another living creature that has its own decisions, its own feelings. It has the and same everything. DNA. It looks Regardless, like you, but it's not you. Right, but from that moment that it's created... You're immediately, we talked about it in your kitchen, it's lot, a lot like you drive the car off the lot and it immediately depreciates, like a new car. Yeah. It's the same thing. As soon as my clone is created, that clone is no longer me and I am no longer him and he's no longer me because he's already seeing stuff through his eyes yeah. that I can't see. Now, he used to see stuff through my eyes. But now he's a complete, he has his own eye. Does that make sense mm -hmm. at all? So it's it's kind of Madeline being able to say, hey, uh, up to this point in my life, I've thought I was you. But now I have this whole fresh start. And I'm going to fucking take it, man. I'm not even the goblin you, you, queen. You got the baby? Sweet. No, I'm she'll, not even the she'll goblin be queen She'll be back. But uh, she's, she's, she's be, 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 be. Yeah, the internet went, uh, Twitter went wild over her. Uh, her look in this episode. That's what she looks like in the comments. God, the internet is so horny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just makes me laugh because I'm like, it's a cartoon. Um, it, I, I think it was a really interesting episode. Again, it's a really tragic episode. And I, I feel for Scott because he always gets fucked over. And I guess that's what makes him such an such. Yeah, but also way to way to go, sound you know team, what? like making the baby sound like it was actually coughing and make me sad. You fucks. I mean, good yeah. job. Good As a job. parent, this was a sad episode. Um, because you think you do put yourself in their shoes and you think of that choice and what is going to be better for the 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 baby. What's going to be better for him? Yeah, go to the future and try and fix this this problem. But uh, also, uh, can we just talk about the when you're done? I do want to talk about something. Go ahead. You fucking did. Sorry. You fucking did. I wanna, but it's just it is tragic because you have the whole his dad being coarser and abandoning him to join the Star Jammers and. Well, no, that's not exactly what happened. He got kidnapped and. Yeah, but he could never face Scott. Like he knew a long time ago, but never talked to him until it was too late. Whatever, because he couldn't face him. Anyway, Star Jammers were kind of stupid characters. Whoa, well, you know. But anyway, uh, sorry. But he he clearly has abandonment issues, and uh, with everything in his past, so the fact that he has to let let his son go into a future that he doesn't even know if he's in. And lose his kid. It's fucking tragic, man. It's a yeah. sad, sad story for Scott. And again, to me, shows the strength of the show is when it's focused on Scott. Scott, and then what it's, what's mostly always worked in the comics is when Scott has been running the X Men, right? But when or yeah, or, or, or when you know, like when Storm is running the X Men, you know, Storm running the X Men is awesome. Um, well, because Storm is a great character, right? But, when uh, um, Bishop talks about uh, at one point uh, at the, towards the end of the episode when he's about to leave with with Nathan, and he's like, you know, have you ever heard of this in your future? And he's like, it's not like a book. History is not like a book. And and if you think about it like that, even things that happened five years ago, let's you know what? Let's take the internet off the table, okay? Um, in the year two thousand, there was even some debate as to. Things that happened in the 80s, 15 years before. And in the 80s, we had all manner of recording devices and everything, and we had all manner of recording history and all ways and all languages and, right? Video, audio, all that shit, right? Yeah. But there's still dispute. And, and, and what Bishop was trying to say is that, you know, hey, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I mean... I don't know. I, I, I don't know. If, I haven't heard of it that I know of, but who knows? I mean, that doesn't mean it didn't happen just because I didn't hear about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's a very, very, very good point that history is subjective. Um, well, I it's think, written by the victors. Uh, that's very true. But, I mean, what we're told about certain things and even, like, the way we used to view um, 
the uh, the way a lot of us used to view uh, uh you know uh, america as a nation and 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 what we can do with it um and and what it's capable of what we're capable of and everything used to be i feel like very different than it is now you know even like 20 years after 20 years 20 years down the down the road it's even different from what it was you know what i mean yeah. so you know uh, opinions change um you know manner of of recording and manner of you know um who writes the who writes the history as the victors and all that so it's a very good point that bishop makes i think yeah and uh, i again i am surprised that they went this early to going to the, the traditional you know, cable storyline. Yeah. I, I thought they were going to let that play out a little bit more throughout the season. So now it makes me wonder to, what the next few honest, episodes are going to be. I, I mean, I remember it was. Uh, I want to say it was X Men Two Hundred again that uh, the trial of Magneto happened um, when uh, X Men Two Hundred One, and it's a very, it's a very cool issue. But X Men Two Hundred One was guest penciled by Rick Leonardi because John Romita Jr. needed some time off. And uh, it featured uh, Storm and Cyclops battling each other for leadership of the X-Men. Because X- Storm told him, basically, like, hey, you have a family now. You got you to gotta move on. And um, he was like, no. And this caused a rift between him and Madeline. And at this point, Madeline's a separate human being. Like, there's never... Jean Grey's been dead for years. Madeline Pryor's a completely separate person. It's only revealed much later that she's a clone of Jean Grey and Sinister. Sinister's not even in the comics at this point, okay? So it's just like, yeah. you don't even know who he is because he's never been introduced. It's not, it's a figment of somebody's. But it's kind of crazy that w- with Sinister being such a big X-Men villain that he doesn't get introduced until much later. But but there there's, I mean, that's an issue where uh, Nathan figures into it. Um, Rachel Summers actually mind melds Kate. Uh, Kitty Pride with the baby, yeah, and she's just like, oh my god, this is like the most beautiful thing, like, cause you know, imagine that, right? Being able to hear, right, just random, like, boo, or what? Or, who knows, right? Um, but it's like baby's breath, you know. You smelled the the idea of baby's breath is that it's it's not stinky yet. Yeah, is that the point of baby's breath? That's what, yeah. I don't know. uh, but it's kind of the same thing with like, uh, but anyway, um. Yeah, he he didn't as a baby. I mean, he wasn't really in the comics that much. I don't think. I mean, sometimes, but more often than not. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the next episode he shows up as he the was traditional a side character. Cable like that we know. he was like a Franklin Richards, you know, whatever. The most I know about, or the most I've seen, Just was around he about didn't... cables when he's been teamed up with Deadpool. I think that's a lot of people's. Uh, I had stopped reading of by the by the time. So Cable gets introduced before Nathan goes into the future in the comics. I know that because I was still reading comics for a couple years after Cable gets introduced. Because I remember I I I bought like X Force fifteen, which that's at least a year after New Mutants is. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's at least two years. So and I know that Nathan goes into the future after I stopped reading comics. So, Cable gets introduced, and I don't think it's decided by the powers that be or the writers that Cable is Nathan Summers. I don't think at at that time. Hmm. I think it's retconned at some point to be like, "Hey, what? Check this out. Well, it's, it's what about Cyclops' kid? What about? Yeah. Huh? Um. So kind of like how uh, I kind of like how uh, George Lucas likes to say that he always me- meant to do nine parts. Yeah. And you're like bullshit. You didn't say. F- it was episode four until after it was huge. Until he started making prequels, yeah. You no, no, until it was, uh, he, he made episode uh, um, five and six, you know, he, it was episode five was Empire Strikes Back, episode six. Yeah. Right? Four, five, and six. Yeah. Um, he did that with five and six, but he tries to say, I, I don't think he's serious because he knows it's, you can look uh, and well, see. I, I don't know about that. Actually, uh, I don't I think, know. Uh, why does your George Lucas sound like Kermit the Frog? Yeah. Yeah, maybe they're both. Is it, is it, is it being it's great? not easy being George. Um, <laughs> uh, solid episode. Um, I 
I really don't like the whole rogue Magneto thing. I do like that. That fucking uh, flesh creature was creepy. Oh, it was weird. Um, also hot. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, but it was it was interesting, like how. <laughs> It was interesting. What's the deal with kinks? What's the deal with people being flesh and move together, melded like people getting welded together? Like a grilled Kramer. cheese. Like a grilled cheese. It's the Kenny Rogers next door, Jerry. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I mean, what else is there to say about this episode? What uh, was the cliffhanger of this one? I forgot. Uh, it was with Storm. Um, yes, Forge. Yes, Forge. Dude, yes, Forge. Yeah. Forge. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, I hope they bring her back with her powers. So it, l- let me just say this: if what they're doing is, if they took basically like everything that they hadn't caught up to yet by the time they ended the first run of the cartoon, yeah. Okay. So bear with me here. <laughs> The original cartoon started in 97 or 92. It ended? Okay, so it started but it ended in ended 97. Ended in 97, yeah. Okay, so in 1992, they start the X-Men cartoon, and it's at a certain point in X-Men timeline comic-wise, like, say, 1982 or whatever. But they add elements from the now or whatever. So I think it's interesting that they're taking a couple of different, like, storylines that were, like, years-long, like, payoffs in the comics and making them like half hour, like uh, resolutions. And I got to be honest, I'm not mad about it. Yeah. I fucking love this. Cause guess what? You know how long fucking professor X was maybe going to come back. It was like fucking 10 years. I swear to fucking Christ. And it was, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like after a while, I was just like, I don't fucking care. Well, anymore. Especially, for a while, especially the X-Men were stuck in the Australian outback for like five fucking years. <laughs> Seriously, nobody knew they were alive in the in the Marvel universe for like five fucking years worth of comic books, worth of issues. We're talking what is that? Sixty issues, right? Yeah. Twelve in a, twelve a year. Yeah. What the fuck, Claremont? Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's there's a lot of things that take. I mean, Claremont was great, but he took a long time to pay off certain stuff. Oh, he was all about the long term. Oh my God. Payoff. Right. That so it's just like, thing. yeah. So, and, and to be clear, the whole Nathan Summers and cable thing had nothing to do with Claremont. I know that he was like, I know he, he had, he wrote Nathan being say, born, isn't that like, cause, but he had that nothing to do with, with like X force stuff. Yeah. He had nothing. To, he, yeah, he because that whatever. was Liefeld, wasn't it? X Force, uh, and uh, yeah, I can't remember Bob uh, Budiansky, I think was the writer, um, and Liefeld was the artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Liefeld wants to say he created, and he probably did create. Like you know, I mean, if he created the um, character like profile and stuff, and said, "Hey, what do you think of this guy? This is what I call him to the writer." Yeah. Okay. Huh. But. He didn't write him. Well, anyway, another really, really solid episode. Um, but yeah, Forge is a Claremont thing, and that again in the in the comics. Uh, sorry to just bore the fucking tits off of you. I'm trying to fucking. Move I'm on. aware. I'm aware. But listen, Storm lost her powers in the comic books, and it, and and again, it took like ten years for her to get them back. So if you're telling me that it's taken like an episode and a half to get her back, her powers. In this show, that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. Storm Without Her Powers was a resourceful, kick-ass character. And she always is kick-ass. I wonder if they're going to, like... I wonder, because... Do you remember, like, the Mutant Massacre stuff? Oh, yeah. That's so how I she... Because lo- she doesn't have her powers during that. She lost her powers in... Uh... But if you remember, that was, like, a that was like the first big, like, multi-book X-Men crossover. Yeah. It also, so, in, it also involved, uh, like, Thor was involved in it. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if they're going with an angle like that or something, something to that effect. I wonder. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, they I did. They I did truly introduce have... the Morlocks, and they moved them all to, you know, whatever. They moved them all oh, to the whole Morlock thing. Is so weird. But, yeah. Morlocks are weird. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if they're if they're going that route, that's cool. Um. Yeah. The mutant massacre. 
That's a di- that's a different uh, episode for a different day. See, the dumb thing is 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 okay. I know. Just bear with I'm, me. We're moving no, on. We're I moving have on. To. I, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I don't wanna, la, la, la. There's a comic. La, 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 la. <laughs> there's a character Save it, brother. named Rom hey. Space Knight that Rom. is owned by Mattel, okay? Or or Hasbro, I can't remember. But Marvel M- the MCU, James Gunn wanted to bring Rom into the MCU. Did you read about this? Did you read about this? Why are we doing? And for it? A, Why are you talking about? Because this? for a time, Rom was a huge part of the Marvel universe, and the r- dire wraiths that he was fighting went uh, showed up in every fucking comic book, right? For like a for a full decade, and the reason why Storm doesn't have her powers is because of a Rom Space Knight story, because she was trying to help him like get rid of the dire wraiths, and she got uh, shot by Forge. Actually, shot her with Rom's yeah thing. Yeah. And negated her powers for however long it was in the comic. Thanks, Claremont. No, but the funny thing is you can't have that in the X-Men 97 because the toy company that owns him, I can't remember who it is, but the toy company that owns him will refuses to let... Um, it's the same one that owns the Micronauts. I think it's Hasbro. But I the, mean, they could. Well, the Micronauts had... Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. The Micronauts had a big know. part in the comics as well in the Marvel universe, but they can't use any of that stuff because the toy company won't let them because they're trying to make like a mar- a cinematic universe themselves. And it's like, fuck off, man. Let us use Rom, man. <laughs> Tyler, sir, I'm sorry. I got a got a spoon. I got I got to show my knowledge to everybody. You know, <laughs> trying to say it in a. <laughs> Not weird way. Too late. Too late for love. <laughs> now it's time for another segment. Wow. That was beautiful. You must be out of your goddamn mind. If you forgot or didn't think that we would talk about. I'm sick of me singing. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah, don't use that one anymore. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, I sang and then you You're going to let the internet control this show? No, I'm just saying, like, after I sang myself and then you played me again, it was like, that's uh, enough too of much, that. that. You know what, I'm... <laughs> maybe maybe I'm crazy, but... I'm ballsy. Oh, Fatal Off Topic! With Jake and Tyler! 